Hello there guys, this is Solid Shepherd bringing you another video. So, Avengers. Um, I never actually got around to playing it because all the reviews were so bad and I obviously, you know, heard how anti-consumer it was. But I've been seeing it on Xbox Game Pass, which I have, so I finally decided, you know what, if it's really as bad as it is, it could make some great content. Um, but I really was trying to go into this game with open eyes. Um, I didn't want to just judge it off of what other people said. I, w I went in tr with, with the idea of I, w I was trying to like it. Okay, that, that, that's the point of view I was trying to go in with. And my conclusion on it, now mine also, I have not played the full game, I've only played the main campaign where you regather, reassemble the Avengers. Uh, I've, I've beat that. Um, so I haven't really gotten to see how grindy it is for uh, end game I haven't played uh, the other story um, campaigns that are on it I only played the story mode basically that was available when the game was released that's as far as I've gotten and I must say you can really tell that Eidos wanted to make a single player game I'll say that right off the bat because the story itself is actually pretty good there's a lot of interactions um, okay, let's talk about interaction. So, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, I don't like her. I, when I say I don't like her, I'm not talking about in this game. I'm talking about her comic books. Her as a character, I've never liked Kamala Khan. She is a very token character. Uh, you know, they wanted to make a Muslim superhero, and she's a woman, so you have the female power. She was, she was very token. Uh, she never really had much character of her own. I've never really liked her. That being said, this version of Kamala Khan in this game, I actually liked. Uh, I think it's the best version of her. So in the beginning of the game, you're like a younger Kamala, and she meets the Avengers. Uh, it's a thing called Avengers Day. And she has these interactions with like Thor, uh, Black Widow, and Captain America, where she's just fangirling out. And I imagine like if, if I was a little boy, uh, right, like Batman and all these superheroes, Spider-Man that I read these comic books about were real and I met them. I imagine I would probably have a similar reaction. Like it was really cool. Like it was kind of corny, but like, you know, felt it. Um, that might just be, you know, if you're not a big superhero fan, if you didn't read a lot of comic books growing up, that might not be the same for you. And speaking of comic books, I do just want to mention that real quick. I do like how they let you, there, there are comic book collectibles. I love that in superhero games where they let you collect comic books. Um, it's not like, I believe, Amazing Spider-Man 2, where you could actually read the comic books, or at least I think a little bit of it. But you do get, like, the covers as a collectible. You can see, you can go look up in your inventory and stuff. So I always like collecting, like, comic book covers, at least, in these games. It just, it's a comic book game. So it, you know, it makes sense as a collectible. It's a really cool. Anyways, like the events of Avengers Days, you know, led to Kamala getting her powers. Um, and I will say like, there's a really good story here. There's a decent intrigue. It's a really good superhero story. And the gameplay uh, is, is rather fun just because like they do have you going between different heroes with completely different skill sets and abilities and stuff. They do make you play as Kamala maybe a little bit too much over the other heroes. Um, so you do kind of get more sick and tired of her gameplay, but overall, I mean, it's pretty varied. The gameplay is good here. So here is the problem. The first hour or two, I was really having a blast. I still love the story all the way through the cutscenes, um, the graphics visually, it looks good. It looks great all the way through. I had no problems with that. The gameplay, um, the gameplay is good. However, I know I'm going to sound like I'm contradicting myself. It lacks variation. And here's why. Now, with what you can do with different heroes doesn't lack variation, right? But what you're doing with those heroes do, do it does. So the mission types, there's like, I I'm being hyperbolic here, but there's like only like three mission types. There might be a little more, maybe only two. I, I don't, I didn't, I don't, I don't count. I don't have a, the number on my head right now, but it's very repetitive. The missions are very repetitive. The heroes that you're controlling, varied, fun, but what you're doing with them, not fun. And now mind you, this is also coming from the mindset of someone who does enjoy a good beat em up and I haven't played a good beat em up in a long time. So I maybe I just enjoyed it a little bit more because of that. 
But I mean, the game was designed to be a superhero beat em up game. You know, this isn't an open world RPG or anything. But yeah, the mission types are not varied by a lot. Like there's a lot of the same, you'll find yourself in like a different surrounding, different scenery doing the exact same things like over and over again. They could have gotten a little bit more um, creative with their missions. And the other part is you're pretty much fighting the same exact bad guys like over and over again. And it's not even like different skins. It's like the exact same guys. You're, you're fighting the AIM soldiers, AIM, AIM. They're like the bad guys of this game. And you're just fighting them, a lot of them. And I know there is like one other group who is like extremist anti-superhuman group or whatever you have to fight. But really they're just, if I remember correctly, they're just like purple aim. Like aim is yellow and then these guys are purple. So they are a reskin, uh, but they're a different group. Uh, and when I said no reskins, I'm just talking about like as far as aim goes, they didn't even try to reskin like different aim soldiers being higher ranked of different colors. Um, but the other group is just a, basically a reskin of them. Uh, with a few exceptions, just a couple exceptions. And they're rare. Like, 90% of the time you're fighting AIM. And then, let's go uh, talk about enemy variety. There's basically, like, three bosses. The only two bosses really of note in the game, which is amazing, right? You have this whole villain roster, and you only end up fighting two actual bosses. One is at the very beginning of the campaign, and one is at the very end. So... The, the end boss is great, uh, multi-phase, you use different heroes, has a nice wrap-up to uh, Kamala's or, like origin story, if you will. It's great. And the first boss that you fight in the beginning of the game task is Taskmaster, as you fight him as Black Widow. And it's a rather fun fight, it's a pretty good fight. Like, there's good game design here, they just didn't use it. There should have been more bosses. There should have been at least maybe like seven or eight bosses here in this campaign, and there's only two. One at the very beginning, one at the very end. I think I might... No, wait, I am missing one. There was this like... Like a high, like a jet that's like sentient almost, like a robot, but it's shake a jet. I'm not sure that you fight. Uh, and that oh, that was a bad fight. That was that was horrendous um, because you had to just take out like little component like mini guns and stuff that pop out to shoot at you, and that's how you damage it. And basically, like, yeah, so you can only hurt certain things on the hell or, or on the on this boss on this jet. And you're playing as Captain America who can't fly. So like, if you fall off the jet, you got to try to hop back up on it. And it's just I did not like it. I I didn't. We're gonna get into this later, uh, but yeah, I'm not a big, I was not a big fan of Captain America. I really don't like playing as him. Um, but anyways, and then uh, another, another big thing that you're going to notice is that this game was indeed created by Eidos, the same people who made Tomb Raider. Because oh my gosh, they were like, you know, those, you know those segments where L Lara Croft is like run in the Tomb Raider reboot games is running from like really dangerous stuff and like the path is collapsing behind her and she's just running and jumping to other platforms and running while like missiles are shooting at her and stuff and like stuff is burning falling apart around her yeah they uh they did that a lot there there was there's a lot of Lara Croft running segments <laughs> they just put like the adventure you're playing as in there um which is strange. I mean, it, the only character it really makes kind of sense for is Black Widow and maybe Captain America. But, like, they, they did that a lot. Like, I felt like it, it's literally reskinned Lara Croft running segments. I felt like I was playing Tomb Raider whenever I did that. Which is fine. I mean, those segments are fun. It's just it's just a kind of hallmark thing, I guess, from Eidos. Uh, that I just... I really felt. I really felt that. Now... I guess the next thing we would talk about is the characters. So like I said, you, you, you're starting off playing as Kamala Khan. This is probably my favorite version of Kamala Khan in any media, really, because she's not a Mary Sue in this game. She has her struggles at first, like, you know, when she tries to get, like, really big and use her power, she has this problem where she keeps on fainting. She's trying, to, So she's trying to deal with learning of how to use her powers. She fails multiple times, uh, and then in the end, she rises above right so once again this is not a token character this is someone who has 
a hero arc, right? Which which just means there's lows and then you overcome those lows because of those highs. Unlike Mary Sue characters like Rey from Star Wars and all them who just like, I'm good because I'm good and everyone's praising me and I'm good. Um, that doesn't happen here. Like she, she has her struggles. It's a very well written like origin story for her. She has many struggles. Um, and else kind of like how she's kind of like the this daughter figure and then like the other Avengers uh, starting with Bruce Banner funnily enough the Hulk ends up being like almost like a father figure to her and she actually has her own father figure uh, her own father actual father who was introduced at the beginning of the game as well uh, and that you know something that he taught her told her a quote to live by basically comes into effect later and I like how that kind of wraps it up. Like, their relationship was very sweet, and I liked it. And then I also liked how, yeah, all the other Avengers were basically like mentors or father-slash-mother figures to her as well. Um, so that dynamic, I really liked it. Okay. She's not my favorite character to play as. I don't know. She's just kind of goofy. I've never really liked the whole Kamala Khan idea of just, like, she makes her hands really big, like a Looney Tunes character. But as far as, like, the writing for her character, uh, not talking about her powers and all that, but, like, her character is good here. Um, then, obviously, like I said, uh, the second character you get, um, Bruce Banner, the Hulk. Uh, the Hulk is really fun to play as, um, but if you... if you, He's really slow, <laughs> right? Um, so he can be kind of tanky, but he can also take a lot of damage. So sometimes, like... If you kind of get bogged down by like harder, a bunch of hard, harder hitting enemies, you don't take them out in the order you probably should. You can kind of get overwhelmed and the Hulk will die really fast. That happened a couple times to me. And, I mean, that's not supposed to happen, and most of the time he's able to just truck through most stuff, right? And then he has a special power that kinda helps with that, you know, basically like the Hulk's rage and all that. That kind of mitigates that, but if you're not paying attention and you're not using those tools that the game gives you, uh, the Hulk can die pretty fast. He's very slow. He's very powerful, but he's very slow. So I'm not really a big fan of playing as him either. Now I, but I do like having him as like a companion, if you know, as a computer played character, or if you're someone who has friends, a friend comes in and play as him. He's really good to have on your team. I just don't like playing as him. And then you have Iron Man. I'm not a huge fan of Iron Man either. I like his mobility, like how he's able to basically fly around and everything, but just his phasers are really hard to aim. Now, if you hit Y from a distance, there is like an auto aim phasers move, but that, like that's tied to the meter. So there's a meter that you can rebuild by either waiting or going and doing some quick attacks, like which for him is his like fist, fisticuffs, like actually hitting people physically. So that's kind of annoying, and then his super special attack, whatever you want to call it, is basically just him pulling out the Hulkbuster suit, Iron Man suit, which is basically just the Incredible Hulk again, and I just described why I don't like playing as the Incredible Hulk. So, I mean, Iron Man's fine, like, you gotta, you know, different people have different opinions. It, it's varied, I didn't, I had fun in the time I spent with them in the campaign, there's just probably not someone I want to choose to play as myself to main or anything like that. And then you have Black Widow. Black Widow has to be, hands down, my favorite character to play as, at least from the main campaign. I really, really enjoyed playing as Black Widow. She's kind of, like, she's, she's, you know, she's agile, she's quick, she's mobile. Her attacks, like I said, are fast. But she also has guns that she can just, like, start firing from a distance. Um, she has these two batons that she uses for heavy attacks for special. She combines them like Nightwing does to create like this big staff that you can do some good damage with. She's just very much, she's fun. Like she can kite enemies and she can also get in there and she's agile enough to where like you can like play like Batman or Asylum or, you know, Marvel Spider-Man style and like dodge, get, and get quick hits in there and then back out and then, you, you know, use her guns to kite the enemies. Like, I really like playing as Black Widow. To me, she is the funnest character um, to play as. And then you have Thor. <sighs> Thor, I, look, I have a very love-hate relationship here with Thor. Thor is really fun. Thor has a lot of abilities. He has that flying ability that he can zoom around the map just like Iron Man does. Um, 
he's very strong like the Hulk, but he's faster, right? So he has that big hit kind of, and then he also has like these godlike lightning attacks basically that he can, he can use, which is really awesome. Uh, you know, he's also he's also got his you know he he can throw Mule in there and then call it back, and if you do it correctly, you can have Mule in there hit an opponent and go behind them and then if you time it right and you have the right angle you can have millionaire come back just like in god of war um and uh hit them again when it's coming back so like thor's fun the one thing with thor though is i found myself continually being low on health with him for some reason I don't know what it is like i just think he's like he's mobile enough but just not enough to be able to dodge attacks it's just, he seems to be an easy target for enemies to hit for some reason, and he just is always low on health, so I always found myself having to run away and like boss encounter, or boss, quote unquote boss encounters, really just powerful mobs. But I kept on finding myself just low on health, having to find eight, you know, health refills to continue to fight with Thor I don't know that's my one issue with Thor like he's fun to play as but I can't keep the man I can't keep him alive worth my life uh, the entire game like up until this point I had not needed I didn't even know my my allies could resurrect me uh when I got take you know when I lost uh HP all my HP until I played as Thor and Iron like I think it was Iron Man someone came one of them came over and you know got me back on my feet so then I'm just sitting there like huh so Thor dies pretty easily for some reason. I don't know. That's my thoughts on Thor. Maybe I just wasn't playing him right? I don't know. Um, and then, finally, we have Captain America. And then I'm gonna try and, uh, and I do apologize if you can hear stuff. Um, neighbors are being loud, booming the music. I'm gonna try and get it, that edited out. But if I can't, I do apologize. If you can hear it, I do apologize. Anyways, then you have Captain America. The good old Cap. Captain America has got to be my least favorite character to play as. Oh my gosh. So anyone with any kind of shield, he, like, he almost seems useless. And, and, and when I say shield, I'm not talking about the, just the front-facing shield. I'm talking about those units that have like the energy barrier around them. Like, it just seems, it feels like he dies faster than I can even get the energy barrier down. It feels like he just never does enough damage. I mean, he's mobile enough, like, on the ground, but, like, he really has no area, aerial ability at all. Uh, the one good thing I can say about him is with his shield, it does boomerang when you throw it. So you can kind of do the thing I was talking about with Thor's hammer. The only problem is with Thor's hammer, you can just you can decide when you're going to call it back, whereas with Captain America's shield, it does it automatically. So it, it's a lot less skill-based and a lot more luck chance-based that you'll be able to get that double whammy in on somebody. And I'm still not completely sure what his his like his ultimate does. Like he says I think he says something like Avengers Assemble or something. I don't know. I I, I did it a few times. <sighs> It just it, it it feels like to me when I was playing as Captain America, everything was a lot more difficult than it was playing as all the other characters. You know, which is sad because Captain America is supposed to be like the you know the Avenger, right? The the number one guy. He's the last character you unlock to get to play as in in this campaign. But yeah, I just didn't really I didn't really like Captain America. A whole lot. I'm sure there's a lot of people who love Cap, uh, but I just I wasn't a fan of the play style. And then of course you have uh, you have um, the two Hawkeyes, the female Hawkeye and the male Hawkeye, and then you also have Jane Foster, and you have Black Panther, um, who are in the game. I can't really speak on them a whole lot right now because I really haven't. Like I said, I've only done like the initial campaign, and they were not a part of that. One thing I do want to think say that's weird is right after you beat the initial campaign, um, there's a cutscene afterwards which gets you into like the post game stuff or whatever, you know, the post initial campaign, the Avengers Assemble campaign stuff. Uh, and an alternate reality version, Nick Fury shows up and starts talking to you. Um, the really weird thing though is the two Hawkeyes are there for some reason and we were not introduced to them. 
um, is like suddenly the Avengers had just reassembled and I'm assuming they're expecting us just to know there's been a time skip or something and they've come back and joined the team since then. I don't know. That's like they're in the cutscene. It's not like, you know, they're like, oh, you've unlocked this character. Like of Jane Foster. OK, whatever. It's like you have to actually get go as her and go to Thor's hammer to start her story quest. And then it will explain why she's there. Like, OK, that works fine. But she's not in the cutscene. The two Hawkeyes are in the cutscene right after you beat the first main campaign. And you're just like, when did you get here? Why Why are you here right now? Like, in this cutscene? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't get it. Why are you here? Hello there, guys. Uh, future me here real quick. I realized I missed something while editing. I did just want to mention, as I said, when Nick Fury shows up, they start along with the Hawkeye stuff. He starts basically explaining a bunch of tutorial stuff that you already know that they already went over during the initial campaign. So I just find that really like it's understandable having that there if you start with uh, and skip the camp, you know, skip the campaign and start with just the the online play stuff. Um, but the fact they leave it in there if you did the campaign is just really jarring. It's like it's just a whole bunch of stuff you got to get through or skip through that you already know all of it. I just thought that was really annoying and needed to be mentioned. Back to, back to present me. It's weird. Um, another thing that slightly bosses me, bosses me. Another thing that slightly bothers me, and it's just like, it's just an immersion thing. Is there are going to be Avengers on your team who don't have rooms? They don't have a room on the carrier on the on the ship, which is slightly annoying. Um, like Kate Bishop has one, but the you know male Hawkeye does not have one. Uh, Jane Foster does not have one. Um, T'Challa does not have one. <laughs> so like I don't. I, it's just you know only like those main Avengers have one for that were in the main campaign, and I don't know like I. There's a few doors that aren't being used. I feel like they could just open up those doors. And then they could, like just add rooms for DLC characters and characters that are introduced later uh, to have rooms just for immersion's sake, because that's a really big important thing. It's kind of a small gripe for me, but like as a huge RPG fan, like I love immersion, uh, like immersive stuff. So I love the the rooms during the initial campaign. But once I got out of it, and there's just characters hanging around on the ship, but just don't have a room. You know, it just slightly bothers me, but it's not a big deal. Other things that kind of bothered me, uh, there were several times when, it, you know, it tells you to hold the X in order to do an interaction, and then, like, the, it, the the prompt would just disappear, and I'd have to fiddle my character around a little bit to get him back into position for it, the prompt to show back up, and then I'd press it, and then it would only go part way through and start over, and then finally, it would actually go all the way through. So, that was kind of a little glitchy, a little buggy, but like I said, it's not a, you know, that's not a huge problem, you just have to do it again um but yeah that was slightly annoying it's a good game here um you can really feel this i don't think this was idos's you know fault that the game d d didn't take off the way it could have because it feels like there's a good base game here like there's a really good game it's just you can tell like i don't know square or whoever it was came in and made them make this a games as a service somehow because the single player aspect is great. The story was great. Like I said, the collectibles are great. Uh, the game looks great uh, from a visual standpoint. Um, the actual gameplay itself is great from what I can see. You know, it's fun. Um, one thing is you want to... You'll want to turn off... I, I, I just thought of this, and I don't want to forget it. You'll want to turn off the vibration on your controller. Because, oh my gosh, it vibrates so much. Just constantly vibrating which will kill your battery and does not feel comfortable in your hands. So make sure you do that. Um, but yeah, but I mean, other than that, like the, the game feels good to play. I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the entire initial campaign and I couldn't wait until I got past it because I was forcing myself to play it first. I know you don't have to anymore. You can just go past that and go to this but i really wanted to play the single player the single player content that came out when the game first came out first and i will say you know if you game pass if you have xbox game pass 
it is definitely worth it just for the main, you know, the initial campaign. I can say that for a fact. The campaign is fun. Um, it, it's engaging. It's a great story. You know, there's a lot of good character moments, a lot of good character development. It's 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 a good story, and the gameplay is fun, and it doesn't really get super repetitive until late into it, and at that point you're just like, okay, but it's worth the push through it so that I can get to this next story bit. I will probably be making another video about post-game. I don't know, I might... So I'm going to play for a while. I'm going to try and pick like a main character, like one, two mains. Probably going to be like Black Widow and someone else. Haven't quite decided yet. And I'll make a video about what that's like. So there is a chance I might actually end up liking Avengers uh, Endgame, but we'll see. We'll see how bad it is. Uh, it's going to depend on a lot of factors, and I'll give you my honest opinion when I have it. But I don't have it right now, and I'm not going to tell you my opinion on something. That I haven't done yet so we're gonna have that um, I'll probably do some stuff uh, I'll, like I'll probably play the other campaigns as well um, and then make a video on those whenever um, we have my opinion on <laughs> basically and let me know if you enjoyed this video my honest opinions on Marvel's Avengers, uh, at least the initial campaign. And uh, let me know your thoughts below. As always, this is Solid Shepard, and until next time, I should go. Yeah.